All right, today we are continuing on with our executive desk build. If you've been following along, you have uh, seen me build the top, and then we got all the panels done for the cabinet itself, and now we are working on moving on to the joinery and all the basic structure of the desk. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna rough cut my parts to length, and I like to rough cut them to length before I mill them to their final thickness, just in case something warps or twists or pinches the blade or whatever while I'm uh, cutting them on the table saw. It gives me a little bit of room to clean them back up and square them back up. I've got my cut list here and I'm just going to start going through and cutting all my parts a little bit oversized. All right, so I got all my parts rough cut and uh, organized here. So whenever I uh, do a large project like this and I rough cut my parts, I like to stack them up in the section assemblies that I'm gonna build them in. And then I put my shop drawing with each one so that way there's no confusion. So this is the, uh, the inner panels, this is the outer panels, this is the web frames for the drawers, and then this guy is uh, the front panel, rails for the front panel. So that way I have my drawing for quick reference and nothing gets messed up. Now we just got to mill them up to their final thickness and final dimensions and then start cutting joinery. All right, so as I go, even though these were in two different stacks, uh, this is my side panel top and bottom rails. And this is my front panel top and bottom rails. These rails are both three inches thick or three inches wide. So I'm going to cut them at the exact same time using the exact same settings. So that way it just improves my consistency. So when I go to cut the mortise and tenons, I only have to do one setup for those guys and uh, know that once I'm dialed in that there's no difference between the two and everything just comes out more consistent. All right, these are my leg blanks. I've uh, intentionally cut them a few inches too long. And so now I've squared up one end and then I set up a stop on my miter gauge so that way I can cut them all to the exact same length is what I'm doing here. And by using a uh, stop at the miter gauge to make sure everything gets cut to the same length, just makes uh, the project come out more accurate, uh, more square, uh, easier to cut all the joinery in the exact same spot. So yeah, I utilize my stop all the time. All right, so I got my legs cut all to the final length, and so now I'm just going to arrange them so I like the, uh, the best grain facing out and also similar grain. So these two have a uh, similar grain, so I'll have those face frontwards, and then the other two will be the back legs. All right, and then I'll mark front, uh, front left, front right, back left, back right, and uh, we'll get cutting some joinery. All right, I'm going to always measure from the top down. That way, if there's any discrepancy in the length of the leg that I cut, uh, it won't throw off my uh, panel width. So I know it's five inches up from the bottom, but if this got a little bit uh, too long or too short, it would uh, show up as an error here. So I'm always measuring from the top. And then this is the dado. So one inch deep and a quarter inch deep. All right, and then for the matching leg on the other side, I am just going to line it up here. All right, and the back leg's a mirror image. So instead of being on this side, the joint will be on this side. One inch, it's quarter inch dado. All 
All right, pinch it between some dogs to hold it. All right, and I got my bit set up in here. Make sure we're sliding easy. All right, set my depth stop. All right, I cut my mortises first in all the legs, and then I reset the depth stop to cut the dados for all the panels. All right, let's cut some tenons. I have my uh, dado blade set up in its widest setting, and the tenon's a little longer than what my blade can do, so I'm gonna take two passes, one take half of it, and then bump it up there. Flip it over and do the other side. All right, since round tenons are done, let's square these up real quick. All right, let's finish cutting these shoulders. I like to do this last little bit by hand. So this is the front of the desk, the top and bottom rail, and there'll be a panel that goes in between here. So I'm getting ready to cut the dados to accept the panels. But uh, I wanna just make sure that I have these lined up. I cut this out of the exact same board, so that way the grain flows uh, from one board to the next pretty seamlessly. Even though they're gonna be separated by about two feet, I think it just adds a little bit to the conversation of the piece. If somebody were to sit there and like study the, study the design and study the grain, uh, they might discover a little hidden Easter egg. They might discover that that grain flows from one board to the next. I think those kind of things just add to the vocabulary of the design. All right, I got my panels all cut to length, which left uh, little strips of wood that I cut in half, so I have a couple pieces to test with. So now we need to run a dado around our panels to fit into the case the way I want it. So I'm gonna use my little strip pieces to do a test cut uh, to test the fit to make sure it fits good. And then I will cut my panels. And then when I cut my panels, I'm going to cut my panels so it's good face up, and uh, that way any kind of inconsistency in the dado will be towards the back of the desk or on the inside of the desk facing the drawers. All right, so as I cut these panels, I'm gonna cut the in grain first, and then I'll turn it to cut with the grain. And by doing that, by cutting the in grain first, the in grain is where all the tear out potential is gonna happen. So if it tears out on the end, when I turn it to cut with the grain, it'll clean up that in grain cut. It'll clean up all that tear out for me. So whenever I cut my tenons, I always try to err on the snug side of things so that way uh, I can remove wood. Uh, it's way easier to remove wood than to put it back. And this little shoulder plane cleans everything up nicely. And then as I go, I'm gonna mark them uh, A, A, B, B, C, C, so that way they all go back the exact same way that I test fitted them as. All right, so I got the main structure of the desk done, and next we are going to put a uh, copper medallion here and then a copper and walnut grid, and that copper and walnut grid will go all the way around the desk to this other side. Um, it'll go across the drawer fronts as well, so I think it's gonna be a really cool detail. So uh, stay tuned for next time, and we'll get that knocked out.